Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamar Mizels and today we're going to talk about the Israeli high-tech industry. How did Israel get to be this high-tech superpower? So first we're going to give a few basic facts about the Israeli high-tech industry and then we're going to get into some of the reasons how or why Israel is this startup uh, nation. And in the next episode, I want to give some pros and cons from my experience working in the high-tech industry for the last eight years. Israel has the largest number of startups per capita. This means in relation to our population, we have the most startups. We have about one startup for every 1,400 people. And that's why we're also called the Startup Nation, a term coined by the 2009 book, The Startup Nation, which we'll talk about later. Israel has one of the most important high-tech centers in the world. Now, aside from startups, we also have the major global tech companies with R&D centers here, Google, Facebook, IBM, and many more companies. And also we have a large proportion of our population works in the high-tech industry, about 10%, which is the highest ratio in the world. What happened recently is that there was an increase in Israel in the number of unicorn startups, which means startups that have an evaluation of over a billion dollars. In 2021, we had 74 tech unicorn companies. And this means that instead of selling out to a larger company in earlier stages, Israeli startups are choosing to mature their companies and to eventually become public. So many say that Israel is actually transitioning from startup nation to scale up nation. And we're able to grow companies to larger scale. 2021 was an amazing year with about $25 billion raised for Israeli startups. 2022, as of all world markets, has been a year that we cooled off a little bit and we raised $13 billion. So how did Israel get to be this startup nation? In their 2009 book, The Startup Nation, the authors give many reasons for why Israel became this startup nation. And two main reasons are the army service and Israel is an immigrant country. If you just ask an Israeli offhand, what is Israel's secret sauce in creating this startup nation? Many of them will say the army service. Israel has a mandatory army service for 18 year old boys and girls. And this creates a few things. First of all, you're giving 18 year olds and 19 year olds a lot of responsibility. You're teaching them important skills of leadership and teamwork and thinking outside the box. Also in the army, you meet a lot of people and you build a great network which is very beneficial later in life to starting companies and working with people. And the Israeli ec ecosystem really has great um, partnerships and sharing and people help each other out. And a lot of these ties are formed in the army. And the third reason is there's actual technological units in the army. They provide young soldiers with training and a lot of technology is developed there. And then when these youngsters leave the army, a lot of these technologies and their workforce is able to work in the private sector. The second reason is that Israel is an immigrant country and we have lots of different cultures and different immigrants from different places. And this uh, helps to create different ways of thinking and to be creative and innovative. And specifically, one very important wave of immigration was in the 1990s, after the fall of the Soviet Union, about a million engineers and scientists from Russia came to Israel and the Israeli scientist and engineer high-tech industry doubled overnight. So this immigration wave was very important to the success of the high-tech sector. Another thing is necessity is the mother of invention. In Israel, we don't have a lot of resources and we have a lot of enemies and we have to think outside the box and different technologies when it comes to watering system and we have a lot of needs and this means that we're gonna be creative in creating solutions to these problems. A different point of view is from this book, a liberal economist, Uri Katz, Israel's miracle, human capital, democracy, and illusions. 
he very much discounts the army service and any government intervention for that matter and says that we actually succeeded despite of it and not because of it. He said that it's not so much that these technological units such as 8200 train and shape our youngsters, but the opposite. The reason that 8200 and these technological units look the way they do and the way that they're so advanced is because of these soldiers, very bright soldiers that come with the traits from their parents and they shape the way those units look. And had these soldiers not spent those years in the army service, he says they could have done much more in the private sector the two main reasons that he does give for this high-tech success in Israel, the first one he said is our human resource. We lead in science and this has been the case since the 19th century. Um, a lot of brilliant minds that shaped science such as Einstein and many others. He said that Jews had a very high percentage of brilliant scientists and this isn't because of some genetic reason, he says, but rather culturally, we have a culture that is very keen on education and on excelling. And that's why we are so good in science and in engineering. And this is our main resource. The second reason he gives is something called power distance. This is a measure how powerful the distance is between subordinates and their bosses or students and their professors. And in 2017, in a study done, Israel had the second to lowest out of 42 countries, the power measure. This means that we always question our bosses and what we're doing and we're always trying to improve and to innovate. The Startup Nation book from 2009, they call this chutzpah, Israeli chutzpah, Israeli audacity to always question what's going on in our bosses and we don't have this distance from our bosses or from people that are above us and we're always questioning everything and this helps us always be innovative and always think and ask the right questions. So these are some of the reasons why Israel is this startup nation and we can't take these for granted. We have to continue to innovate and to have a great high-tech sector which helps our economy very much. And in the next episode, I'd like to share some pros and cons to working in the high-tech industry, something that I've been doing roughly for about eight years, and some pros and cons to this high-tech society in Israel. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. See you next time.